Maca's guides. <laughs> Hey guys, Maca here with my 100% collectibles guide for Metro Exodus. I've worked almost a full week on this and would really appreciate if you guys drop a like and subscribe to the channel for future content similar to it. Let's just jump straight into it. The game has a total of 91 collectibles, including 70 diaries and 21 postcards. We'll need to grab both of them for two separate achievements or trophies. Additionally, the moment you pick up a collectible, it will automatically save, and you can browse your collectibles from the pause menu at any point. Now, there are going to be some linear levels as well as some open levels. We're starting off with the first level, Moscow, a pretty linear level. You'll come through a door, be attacked by an enemy, and you can find your first diary on a small bench to your right. Then a little bit later on in that level, you will wake up from a bed. You'll get control of your character. And on the table, just to your left, you can find the patient file. In terms of the information shown in the upper left corner, you'll obviously see the level that we're on as well as an active counter. If there is a word there, that means it's a diary, and that's the name of the diary if you want to cross-reference with the collectibles you already have if you're on a second playthrough. And obviously, if it's a postcard, it'll say postcard 1, 2, 3, and so on. You can find your first postcard just not far from the second collectible there. You can find it on this little shelving unit. You'll then come to this mandatory section where you are in an apartment and coming down a few steps, you'll then end up on a staircase going downward. And instead of continuing down that staircase, stay on the floor and go into the first room to find postcard number two. From the previous collectible, the postcard in the apartment, we can find the dusty diary in the room next door on the table. We will then come out of the apartment and use this kind of steel beam to get down into here. You'll probably want to turn your flashlight on and you'll end up inside of a small shopping center. You'll kill off a few enemies and on the left you should be able to find this person and they should have a diary next to them, the shopping list. From the shopping list, we can make our way into the bus to find the next possible uh, collectible, another diary. In this uh, first level, I believe it's 10 diaries and two postcards. So work your way down the escalators, go into the bus, and on your right-hand side, find Shura's note. You will then reach this section of the level where you are crawling. You'll have low health, so your screen will be blinking red. As you stand up, you should be able to walk straight forward in front of you and notice the crumpled letter collectible uh, sitting on a body there. You'll make your way to a command center where you'll meet Anna, and then you'll be stormed in upon. As soon as you gain control of your character, find the collectible behind the commander sitting on the control panel. Don't move. Attention. Control unit damaged. Morons! We are at war! One tap won't be enough for you now. We will then sneak out of the area we were in. I've kind of taken out all of the enemies in a stealthy way. You will find this giant red door with a green light above it, and you will be able to enter that door. And there will be a collectible diary on the left on a table as you kind of enter just behind a couple of things. We are now later on in the Moscow level. You will climb into a train car and be able to find the official letter as soon as you gain control of your character in the first room to your left. There's also a missable achievement slash trophy here called Breakman, and I do have a separate video available on the channel if you'd like to check it out. Last but not least, we can find the crumpled note once we reach the train car with the Gatling gun. Just past that, a whole bunch of enemies we've already taken care of. Move forward and find this one to your right, right as you enter the next cabin. We are now in a transitional chapter. This one's called Winter, where you spend time on the train, which is nicknamed the Aurora. 
You can sit on the radio and find some music in order to find an optional achievement slash trophy, but as soon as you get up, you might want to go downstairs and find the survey report sitting on the little crate there. Keep in mind, you can also chapter select at any point during this game from the main menu. Next up, we're in the level The Volga. This is an open world level. And as such, I will be showing the map before every single collectible. And you can do these in any order you really want. I'm going to be showing them in the order that makes the most sense based on your objectives. So what I did was first off, you're going to go to this area on the map, end up in like a little bit of a church type area. You'll find some people here you might need to help. If you make your way inside from where you docked your boat, you should be able to climb up a ladder and find postcard number three in the game. Volga, I believe, has a total of 18 collectibles, by the way. Now, after going to that church area, you'll have a boat and you'll be tasked with going back to the Aurora. And to do that, you'll end up on this kind of island. You can see the Aurora there off in the distance. You'll want to go to where I am on the map. Watch out for the shrimp. They will kill you. And you might find this little outpost here where you can find the moldy log collectible. After working our way back to the Aurora, we'll be tasked with a new objective in order to kind of explore the bottom part of the map. We'll end up inside of this building as part of the mandatory path. And as we work our way through the building, we will then drop down and we'll have to go through this door right in front of me on my right hand side. Now, as you go through this door, you might notice a crane off in the distance, which is kind of our objective. But instead, go down and to the left into the staircase, and then you'll be able to come through this door. There will be an enemy in front of you, which I would highly recommend you take out. Additionally, probably put on your gas mask since it is a little bit radioactive here. And you will be able to find the faded note on the kind of cabinet in front of you. Now, keep in mind, a couple of the collectibles have the same name, so there is another faded note later on in this chapter. There's also like four collectibles called the Crumbled Note, and so on and so on. They're all unique, so make sure you pick up all of them, even if they have the same name. Later on in the Volga, we are now on top of the crane as part of the mandatory uh, mission line. And once we kind of climb down the ladder, we'll end up in these kind of living quarters, Inside of there, we can find postcard number four, as well as a campsite that we can rest at and, you know, uh, clean our guns, craft ammo, and so on and so on. Make sure you pick this one up before you leave down the zip line. Now, on your way back to the Aurora, you will be tasked with finding Anna, who ventured off into a vault, and you'll drop through the ceiling in order to kind of save her. I've already left and then came back, so the door is open, but your door won't be quite open. You'll drop in, you'll have to work your way through, turn on the lights, the power, you know, save everyone and all that stuff. Make sure you turn on your flashlight. But if you're working your way through, uh, after the first kind of corner, you can go through the right. There's a locked door, but you can just melee your way through it. And then inside of this kind of side room, you can find the waterlogged note, another diary. Now we've went back to the Aurora, you can see what my current objective is, and on my way there I've decided to kind of go in the kind of center north part of the map. Uh, there will be some enemies here, but there will also be um, this little storage unit, and inside there, there is a collectible as well as an upgrade. There's going to be a lot of upgrades, I do have a separate video for upgrades, but I will leave an annotation in the top right corner, or you can check out the playlist. Uh, you have a total of 12 possible upgrades to your suit if you so desire. We've kind of moved on a little bit. We've went to this next location on the map. We're still obviously in the same level, the Volga. And you'll come across this small base camp where you can free a prisoner. He'll give you a key for some night vision goggles if you want. There's also an upgrade in this area. But watch out for the traps. Work your way down to the center area, and you should be able to find the folded letter. We've worked our way all the way to the kind of top right of the kind of mainland in order to find this little settlement. And you'll see that there's a small kind of tractor here where we can enter through the back. This is going to be a little supply point, save spot, you know, craftable area location. Inside you can find the torn page on the little shelf to the right hand side. And there's also a second collectible here, which is the postcard. 
uh, on the little unit here. So there's postcard five right next to it. Make sure you pick up both of the collectibles in this little house. From that previous location, we've made our way a little bit kind of south, and you will find a gas station with more enemies to take out, of course. And inside of the kind of front left pocket, you can find the weathered notice. I believe there's also two of these in the game with the same name. In the back, you can also find the harness for throwables in order to carry more throwables as an upgrade if you're interested. Now, a little bit west of the gas station, after I put my map down, you can actually see the gas station in the distance. Uh, there's a little bit of a storm. Your storm may or may not have kicked in. There's usually going to be a storm. You can always sleep at one of the supply points if you want to pass the time to get the storm away. But kind of in the middle of nowhere, not too far from the gas station, you can find this hollowed out van with a envelope inside. We now find ourselves on an island, which means that we took a boat. I will show you that my boat is docked right here, and I'll sh show you roughly where I took that boat from. You do have to get into a boat as part of the main storyline, so feel free to come here once you do that, or you can try to find that boat as early as possible. But if you make your way to this island, you should be able to find the bandit's note right in the middle. We have then continued sailing along the water to this other pocket. And right in front of us, there is another kind of island here with some ice and a sinking building. This building is extremely toxic, so make sure you put your mask on. You don't spend too much time inside. But after getting out of your boat, you should be able to find the patient's ledger in the final room. Kind of in the bottom left corner there. We have now made our way onto this kind of southern island that's detached from everything else, obviously using that boat we were just in. Not far from the silos where you can grab the teddy bear for the friend of a crew achievement slash trophy, you can find this small shack. Inside of the shack, you can find the bloodstained diary, as well as a suit upgrade if you are so inclined. We are then working our way towards our main objective. On our way there, we can find this kind of rusted out train depot uh, with a bright red container and some ramps kind of leading up to it made out of wood. Feel free to jump up those ramps. You'll end up climbing a ladder. At the top of the ladder, you can find a pretty good gun as well as a collectible. We can then find postcard number six kind of all the way on the far right side of that southern island. And, you know, you can actually take your mask off. I already had mine on just in case. But once you kind of make your way through this gate where the train tracks lead through, if you turn to the middle or to the left, depending on which way you kind of come through, you can find this small shack with a blue door, which obviously signifies a safe spot. Inside, find postcard number six. Next, we have the thick ledger. I've made my way to the terminal. I'm opening this very mandatory door as part of my main objective. And there will be a train car directly behind me that I can now ride out of this area. But before doing that, I would recommend you go across the hall and into this area where you can find the collectible diary as well as to go for the fisherman achievement slash trophy for killing the catfish. Last but not least, at the very end of the Volga, you can find postcard number seven. You'll end up on a barge with a ton of enemies that are doing a sort of ritual. You can actually completely ignore them. They won't really notice you. You might have to take out one or two who wanders. But if you make your way kind of through to the right here, uh, you, you'll be able to find a door, and that door is going to have a lock on it, which is on the other side, but you can actually melee through it, or you can shoot your way through that door, and then you'll find postcard number seven in the next room. At our door. The ones who attack 
cloister. Even with their iron steeds standing before us, stinking of machine oil and shining its heretical light upon us, we will not fall back. All right, we are back on the Aurora, the train. This is the kind of interlude between missions called Spring. As soon as we're able to get up and walk out of our room, we should find the little boy. We can find his letter just sitting here on a bench, not far from where we spawned. We are now on the mission Yamantu, which is a very linear level, meaning I won't be showing the map because you have to do the same route as me through the entire level. You'll end up taking an elevator and directly in front of you, you'll go through a metal detector. On the table on your left is the diary page number one. Then we'll end up in a freezer section. We'll go through. I've taken care of all of the enemies. You'll come through this area. You'll squeeze through these cabinets here. And again, these are all mandatory areas. You have to go this way on this level. And in front of you, you should notice a power panel to the right, which you should probably activate just right away. But there's also a part you can squeeze underneath. And this kind of leads you into a very optional side room. Directly in front of you when you stand up, you should find postcard number 9 nailed to the target board. Now there is actually a collectible right next to postcard number 9. But there's a little bit of a trick with it. And you might notice it as you play alone. But I've actually taken a step out from the previous collectible. And I've went and I've turned on the light panel, which is directly next to the crawl hole. And if we crawl back in, we can find diary page number two sitting on the table right next to the postcard we just picked up. However, this uh, collectible will not appear until after you turn the lights on for some reason. So it's a little bit glitchy. It's the only one in the game that's like this, but keep that in mind. Then moving on, you'll come to this very long, narrow hallway with a couple of red lights, a lot of enemies. You work your way down and you can climb up a couple of things on your right hand side. So what we're going to want to do is climb up on the right instead of taking the ramp directly in front of us. All of the paths kind of lead to the same area, but there's this uh, kind of small little, you know, tr uh, hut thing. And inside you can find diary page number three. Uh, there are very, very many diaries in the, in the game, but this one's called diary number three. You'll then come to this area where we took out a little bit of a mini boss and uh, all of the enemies as well. You'll come through these cells that are numbered one through six or one through five. And in the second one on your right, you should be able to find diary page called Officer's Diary Number One. Then we will find Anna. We will have a short conversation. And as soon as we gain control of our character, uh, directly to the left of the doors in front of us, we can find postcard eight. From postcard number eight, the door to our right should now open and Anna will go through it and we'll also go through it and we can find officer's diary number two, collectible number 39 of 91, almost halfway there on the left side on a barrel before going through the elevator. You'll then come to this section with all of your buddies. You'll see this kind of door in front of us with the large A4 uh, marking as well as the kind of elevators that go around in a circle. Before hopping on the elevator, make sure you grab Officer's Dire number 3 on the crate on your left hand side. We are now on the level Caspian, probably the biggest level in the game. It's a completely open world level, which is why I'll show you the map every time we pick up a collectible. From the very beginning, as soon as we get out of the train, go into this kind of side hut and find postcard number 10. Now you will be able to use a vehicle for the majority of this level, so keep that in mind. You're probably going to want to drive it around, but I'm also going to give you hints as to when to go for these based on your objective. So after you get the vehicle, you'll have the objective of going to the lighthouse. Before going to the lighthouse, or actually on your way to the lighthouse, you should come across this outpost. That's like a little bit of a boat kind of over the road. And we can now work our way in here and there are two collectibles we can grab. The first one is the first mate's diary. What we need to do is go upstairs to the second floor. And on the second floor to our right hand side, there's this guy kind of doing his thing. You can find that collectible. And then we'll find the leader's diary by going up to the third floor. And the third floor is once the is where the enemies start becoming hostile to you. So you'll probably wanna either take them out, knock them out or be stealthy. But if you run across the boat 
into the other side, then follow up a staircase to your left and uh, go to the right hand side on the kind of plateau up there. You can find the next collectible. There's also an upgrade here you can pick up for your suit if you go to the top floor. Then on our way to the lighthouse, we will end up in a cave and we will take a zip line kind of into the cave. And this is, this is where you land from that zip line. This is a mandatory part of the level. And as you work your way through, there will be some kind of explosions and fire and whatnot. But there is a pretty easy to miss collectible letter to sun on our left hand side, kind of tucked away in this little corner next to this guy. You'll then eventually reach the lighthouse and the person inside will send their little boat elevator down to come grab you. And you can get on top and you can use the, le the lever to work your way up. And there is a postcard inside of their office. Make sure you grab it before you continue or else you cannot come back and you will have to restart the level like myself. This was personally my last postcard, so you'll see my achievement unlock on screen, but we uh, still have quite a few to go if you're following along. From the lighthouse area, we will then work our way into an underground bunker, one of my favorite parts of the game personally. You'll be tasked with turning the lights and the power back on in this area. You'll notice that door in front of me. This is another mandatory section, even though the map is kind of more open than others. And before we kind of go through, make sure you work your way into this kind of side office to find the memo collectible. Then we will work our way through some washrooms. We'll end up in a hallway and we'll have to kind of fix the ventilation system. And there will be a locked door right in front of us. This is, again, another kind of mandatory section of an open world area. So you will have to do this. The door is locked in front of us. You will crouch under a small creep hole to your right, work your way through a door into an office area, and you can find the image analysis there on the desk. We have then made our way to the map room as part of our main objective and acquired the map. From the map room, we can work our way back out, turn to the right hand side and go through this door where we can find night vision goggles on the table if we don't already have them. But additionally, we can find the Last Orders collectible. Now, after escaping that underground bunker, we'll be told to go back to the Aurora. And on our way back to the Aurora, I would recommend stopping by this collectible. I've shown you the location on the map. It's kind of down in a little bit of a valley, and it is a you know hollowed out boat that was stuck when the Caspian Sea uh, basically eroded away or evaporated or whatever happened. And once inside here, we can kind of work our way all the way across the boat in order to find the diary fragments. Nothing on the air. Nothing to listen to. Oh, fuck. Don't, don't shoot. Don't shoot, man. Now, after going back to the Aurora, you'll be tasked with going to the Oasis, which is in the top left of the map. On your way to the Oasis, you can stop by this camp in order to find the Baron's letter sitting underneath this umbrella on a table. Now, if you push a little bit deeper from the previous collectible, you'll end up in a camp where you have to kill everyone in order to gain access to this ladder. After you climb the ladder, you should be able to find Death Note sitting next to the body on the bottom kind of right hand side there on the barrel. There's also a upgrade for your suit sitting just behind that if you want to grab it. We've now almost reached our objective of the Oasis, and we'll meet up with our friend Demir, and there will be this camp where there's a bit of a little split. We'll go down to the right and kind of slide down some rocks to meet up with him, and the collectible postcard number 13 is very close by. What we have to do is slide down the rock, well, proceed forward. You'll notice a little kind of like operator's booth, 
and in there you can find the postcard kind of nailed to the inside of the door frame. The cave isn't going anywhere. From this collectible location, we can find the letter to the artist by backing out of this operator's booth and going up this ramp nearby and then going kind of down the catwalk to find it there. We've now returned from the Oasis, gone back to the Aurora, and are now headed all the way to the far right-hand side of the map. For me, it's nighttime. For you, it might not be. If you are following the road, you will stumble upon this outpost that kind of goes above the road. Before going under, stop, get out of your vehicle, jump up to the left, and you should find this location. I would then recommend clearing out the rest of this outpost and taking the zip line to our next collectible, not far from that. We can find another large boat kind of docked. You can zip line to it or you can take a couple of ladders from underneath it. You'll clear out all of the enemies. There's an absolute ton. There's a kind of a Gatling guy as well you have to take out. And in the final room you can make your way to, you can find postcard number 12 as well as another collectible nearby, which is a diary page. So let's go inside, find the postcard. So inside of that same boat, next to the postcard, we can also find the shopping list. As we work our way to the far right of the map, uh, we can find postcard number 14. There's a little bit of an abandoned airbase with a hangar on the right-hand side uh, if you approach from the Aurora. If you enter, go all the way to the back to find the postcard kind of stapled onto... Uh, some storage boxes, and then watch out for all the enemies that will attack you. We are now back on the Aurora. This is the summer chapter, one collectible as... Per the pattern, we'll work our way out of our little um, bunk or our little cabin with Anna and work your way to the back of the train. Go to the newly acquired uh, fuel tank kind of uh, train car. Work your way all the way to the back. And as you kind of enter uh, the workshop, look down into your right on the desk. We are now on the level Taiga, which has 23 collectibles. It seems like an open world map. I will be showing you the map whenever I need to, but it is also somewhat of a linear level. From the very beginning of the mission, just work your way up the stairs, pick up the crossbow, and then work your way into the right-hand side little building to find the postcard. Now from that previous collectibles location, work your way back to the main path, go through the gate, and as you go through the gate, the next collectible should kind of spawn right on the post right there uh, to your right hand side as you go through the fence. We have then made our way a little bit down, crossed a small bridge, and we are now in the children's camp slash children's school area. You'll notice the statue of Lennon in front of us. You can actually take it down in order to unlock an achievement or trophy. But just past that, you can find this blue building inside uh, right there in front of us. As we enter, we can find a collectible. And then from the location of this collectible, we can find the next one. So just go past this blue house. Go across this kind of uh, shattered bridge and instead of going across you're going to want to go down and to the left and then follow the path uh, to the left of this big tree to go into this building and in this building we can find a postcard nailed to the side of a cabinet.
Now from the previous collectibles location, we can work our way back to that bridge that we jumped down off of, and we'll actually go across it now. There will be a lot of enemies on the other side, which I've already taken care of, so you can either try to be stealthy, or you can take them out, or you can just kind of go and see what happens. But go back to that bridge, jump across, and then as you work your way across, you'll notice this house on the right-hand side. It's a greenhouse, and go inside, and turn right once you're inside. Go to the back room to find the collectible right here. From the previous collectibles location, we're going to work our way to our kind of mission objective, which is to make our way up that large tower. And there will be a zip line there waiting for us to get to the next section of the map. Before taking the zip line, make sure you pick up the diary that sits right next to it, though. I won't tell you anything under torture, so you better kill me now, Tracy. Come in. We keep trying to contact you. I'll show you exactly where on my map I am now, but not long after taking the zip line, I've just followed the dirt path, and on the left-hand side, you'll notice a kind of treehouse with lights on it. If it's the daytime, it you know it might not have lights in it, but you should be able to just kind of run straight at it, and you'll find a rope ladder to climb. So you'll climb that up and find the diary pretty much right in front of you. From the treehouse where the previous collectible was located, we can work our way across this bridge and then take the zip line kind of down and across the valley and you'll see a small little camp with a flame off in the distance. If it's daytime, you might have some trouble seeing the, the, the flame there. There's kind of like one guy here. You probably don't want to take him out. I took him out just to be safe, but that's bad for your morale and your karma, so you might get a bad ending to the game. But basically, in his little headquarters there, if you go inside, you can find another collectible down and to the right. Left. Yes, left. My bad. We've then worked our way back to not far from where we were, right along that same dirt path. There will be like reindeer running around and wolves also tracking you, but if you work your way to the right hand side, off the path, through some trees, you may notice that there is a small kind of cabin in the woods, so to say. There is also a villager here, which I will not kill this time. And inside of his little fisherman's shed, you can find the collectible very obviously right in front of you as you enter. We are now back on the dirt path, but a little bit further up now. Uh, you'll notice that there are some kind of lights to the left-hand side. And that's where we're supposed to go. There's a small little ladder up there we're supposed to climb. But instead of going up there, there's a small cave just off to the left-hand side. So we'll want to run into that cave. Watch out for the wolves. Feel free to turn your flashlight on and find the collectible in here before heading up that ladder. I have now headed up the ladder, and my objective has changed. There is a large base camp in front of me. You'll notice three or four enemies kind of gathered around right in front of me where I am, as well as some tree houses to the left and right of the path. If you take the left-hand turn here, you'll notice a little camp with a sign there. We'll ignore that. Go to the slightly right of that, find this little cabin to find the collectible inside. Now the next collectible is inside of the giant base camp. I went and I slept at a campfire to make it daytime. I've taken out all of the enemies and then opened the gate. You'll have to probably zip line your way in or use that same cave in order to gain access into the base. And as soon as you enter through that front gate uh, to your right hand side, go inside on the table, find the diary. You'll work your way past the base camp to the highest point, use a zip line, and you'll end up in this canyon right here shortly after. And on your way through the canyon, you will have to kind of go forward, but you'll notice that there is a cave to your right-hand side. We're actually going to take that instead. Find the first collectible in this cave as soon as you enter on the right-hand side. The next collectible is also in the same cave. Just run down. You can sprint or you can slowly walk, whatever floats your boat. 
And as you kind of come across some water, you'll notice a body in front of you. Look down and grab the diary from it before moving forward and into the next base. I'm now inside of that next base I was just referencing. I've taken out all of the enemies. This is where I started from. You'll notice the kind of uh, decorations in the middle of the area. You'll notice the bus as a landmark there too. Uh, the bus is kind of pointed towards a house and go inside that house to find the next collectible. Now, in that base we were just in, you can kind of go around back or you can work your way downhill from the base. And at the end of the downhill path, you'll see this boat off in the water directly in front of us. Take a right-hand turn at the boat. At the very end of this kind of pathway, you can find a small little shelter with a collectible. And then we'll have to work our way back to where we kind of came from to proceed through the level. We are now approaching our main objective, which is the church. And... There will be a gate in front of us before we reach it. And on that gate to the right-hand side, just below, uh, you know, look down. You'll, you'll see this one pretty obviously there before going through the gate. We have now exited the church, and we've taken a path. And the path kind of separates into an upper and a lower path. So we're going to take the upper path, and you'll notice a kind of billboard on the left-hand side. Uh, detailing the area and a gazebo to the right hand side and that gazebo has a zip line down to our objective but before taking that zip line you'll want to quickly grab the uh, diary here you'll then end up in a kind of water town that connects two of the pieces of land a lot of enemies there is a lever we'll need to pull in order to open the gate so that we can take the boat and leave this area. Uh, just underneath the lever, so above me right now is where the lever is. Below the lever, instead of before going upstairs, find the diary. You'll come to this mandatory part of the story where you take a small elevator and you'll end up, after taking the elevator, kind of on this guy's attic. There's a bunch of plants and there is a door. We'll need to go inside that door and we will meet the Admiral. If you wish, you can sit with the Admiral for about 8 to 10 minutes in order to grab an achievement or trophy called 5 o'clock for enjoying his tea party. But we're here for a collectible on the right-hand side. Find the postcard. A little bit later on in the mission, we will go into kind of like a little bit of a bunker. We will turn on the power, and once we have the power on, we will be able to open this large red gate in front of us using the uh, little, you know, power box on the right-hand side of it. As soon as it opens, you'll see a body in front of you on the ground, and there will be a collectible on it. Last but not least, we will reach this area in the Taiga mission with our little friend here. I believe his name is Aloysia. If you've been a good boy, Aloysia will join your crew and not be injured. If you have bad karma, however, that turns out a little differently. But work your way forward about halfway through. Turn to the right. Go underneath this sign that says house number 34. In here, you can find two collectibles. So on the table directly in front of you, find the diary. And on the wall directly to your left, you'll kind of have to go inside the room and look on the other side of the doorframe. Find your next postcard. And we are off to the next level. Back on the Aurora, it is now autumn. After quite a long uh, discussion with some of your crewmates, instead of going to the map and proceeding with the next level, You'll have to go back into the ship and go all the way to the opposite side where the workbench is. And just across from your workbench, you can find the next diary. Uh, 
We are now on the final mission of the game, Dead City. You may notice in the top left corner, our counter has went up to 92 instead of 91, and that is because the game says that there are 70 diaries, but there's actually 71 diaries, and you do need to collect all of them for the achievement or trophy to unlock. So there's actually 92 collectibles and not 91 like I originally thought when I started this guide. Nonetheless, you'll come through a mandatory section, defeat some enemies, squeeze through a box, come into this room on a small post between some lockers. You can find postcard number 20. We will then go for a little swim in the water. As we exit the water, we'll have this kind of a ramp of dirt. Notice some cages as well as a ramp to your right. Uh, stay turning to your right as you go up the ramp to see a desk behind you where there is the radiogram transcript. You'll then come up a broken escalator. As you make your way to the top of that escalator, you'll notice a door to your left-hand side, which we can open. I'm not showing you the map on this level because it is a linear level, so everything I'm doing is completely mandatory, and you can't really go off of the normal path. As you go through the first door, go through the second and third door to end up in the kind of final room, and look to your left-hand side behind some servers to find the weathered report. You will then end up in this little safe room with some plants. Our final postcard, number 21, can be found on the post to your left-hand side as you walk towards the board of maps. Your achievement or trophy should unlock if you have followed along. If not, feel free to pause the game, go to the collectibles menu, and see what you're missing. Additionally, in this room, we can also find a diary. Go to the large kind of map board and pick up the orders diary. We will then leave the safe room by crawling through a hole, and as soon as that happens, there may be some enemies. You want to climb up these stairs, and you'll work your way through a train. Once you're in that train car, look down into your right in order to find the notebook. Not the movie, the collectible. You will then be working your way through the putrid tunnel on a boat, and it looks like it's filled with traditional German stew Hessenpfeffer as well as some poppycock popcorn, but you'll get off your boat on the left-hand side and find this little optional room. And if you work your way through, there are some leeches and enemies you might want to take care of. You'll find a door that we can squeeze through, and then a small room with a somewhat useful gun as well as the worn-out diary. We have then reached yet another broken escalator, and on our way up, make sure you have that flashlight nice and bright. Go to the right-hand side and go through the little turnstiles, 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 and go forward, and you'll notice an open door on your left-hand side. We'll want to go through that door, and kind of down into the left near the desk there, we can find the browned note. We will then come to this mandatory section outside where we have to kind of drop down into this hole and there will be a tank. As you drop down, you kind of want to turn around and go behind you and go deeper into the tunnel. And at the end of the tunnel, you can find the dusty notebook. Last, but certainly not least, the final collectible in the game. After this vision of the body with the gas mask, we can drop down, go through the door uh, on the right-hand side, drop down the staircase through the next door, finding the final collectible sitting on a table directly in front of us. I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching the video here with me. If it was helpful, again, you can drop a like. Please share it with a friend. That is the most helpful thing you can do. Hopefully, I see you guys in the next video. Special thanks to all the amazing people on Patreon for supporting the show. Shout out to Double O, and hopefully I see you guys next time. Peace!